there is a required practical that you need to do to measure the specific heat capacity. Memorize your methods for your required practicals. Firstly, you'd measure the mass of the block using a balance. Then you'd measure the starting temperature with a thermometer and you'd turn on a power pack and there's a diagram coming soon. You'd heat for a set time, now I've given five minutes. Measure the final temperature with a thermometer. Notice how when I write a method here, I'm making sure I say what I'm measuring and what I'm measuring it with. Measure the final temperature with a thermometer. Then what you do with that data, calculate the temperature rise by subtracting the start temperature from the final temperature, so the difference in temperature. Then you calculate the energy transfer using this, the energy is power times time. So the power of the heater, most heaters that we use in the lab at least, is 50 watts. So five minutes, that's five times 60 seconds, 300 seconds, multiplied by 50 watts gives us whatever that power is. Calculate the speed of heat capacity using the equation. And here's some example results for that, which you could work out the specific heat capacity for. Notice here that the water, the temperature rise is less than copper because water has a higher specific heat capacity. It's also really useful to memorize the evaluation points for all the required practicals that you need to do. So here's some. So for accuracy in this case, you're gonna make sure you explain how to use a thermometer. You keep the bulb, that's the bit with the alcohol in at the bottom, the black bit of the thermometer submerged whilst you read it. You read at right angles to the scale. So at eye level to the scale is another way to say that, to avoid what's called parallax error. You can use a longer time if you want more accurate timing. Precision is gonna be about repeated measurements in this case. If you repeat it, do you get little scatter from the mean? Do you get repeated values that fall close together? That's precision. A systematic error in this particular experiment is that energy is also transferred by heating to the surroundings. So the values of specific heat capacity we get from this practical is usually a bit too high. So one way you can get around that is to actually insulate the block. One way to improve this practical is to actually plot a graph. And what you do here is you take continuous readings for time and temperature. So rather than waiting for five minutes, take a reading every minute or so uh, of the temperature. And from there, work out the energy transferred at that point and the temperature rise. You can then plot a graph of energy, which is power, which is V times I times T, potential difference times current times time, to give you the energy on the y-axis. This is our change in energy here on the y-axis. and our temperature on the x-axis. Now the gradient of that will actually be mc, which will be the uh, mass multiplied by the specific heat capacity. So the gradient of this graph, you can see down here, y equals 1050x. So the gradient is all we're interested in, in this case. We can ignore the intercept. The gradient is 1050 and multiply that by four or divide it by 0.25 to give you c, which is the specific heat capacity. That is a really high order skill for GCSE, but they could ask you to do something like that.